In this video, we'll talk about block matrices for the first time. And block matrices are matrices like this that seem to consist of two or more simpler matrices. So this one is actually a five by five matrix and all the blanks are zeros. And we can think of it as a combination of this three by three matrix that we just considered in a different context, talking about null spaces and eigenvalues, and this two by two matrix with which we're also familiar and know both of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And for this trick to work, these blocks need to be centered. They need to straddle this diagonal perfectly. And as I'll show you a little bit later, other arrangements are possible. So why are block matrices easy or good to analyze in some way? Well, that's because we can analyze a larger structure by analyzing its smaller parts individually. There's this very nice decoupling going on. And that wouldn't be the case if these were arranged differently. So here's what I mean by decoupling. So this is a five by five matrix. So it can only be multiplied by five by one vectors. And the thing that you should notice is that you, if you were to multiply it by a vector like this with three, these aren't threes, these are just wiggles representing some non-zero numbers, followed by two zeros, okay, then this matrix product will only engage these entries because when it multiplies, when it interacts with these entries, these are zero and all of these entries interact with the two zeros here. So there is no overlap. So multiplying this whole matrix by this vector is almost like multiplying this three by three matrix by this three by one vector and then adding two zeros. Right? It's just two subspaces within the five dimensional space. The subspace of the first two entries and the subspace of the last two entries, which of course would interact similarly with vectors like this, right? Products with a vector like this would only engage these entries. And to get the answer, we just need to write down the three zeros and then whatever this matrix times this vector is. That's what I call decoupling. If these were in some other arrangement, that wouldn't be the case because we'll have these entries interacting with these entries and it will become a mess. And even though some information could be gleaned from that special structure, it's certainly not as nice and clean as this one. That kind of decoupling won't occur at all. All right. So this will take a little bit of time to get used to and block matrices obviously tell us a lot about the problem we're trying to solve. They're useful in many ways and it's a very good place to start that larger discussion about block matrices. But right now we're concerned with eigenvalues. So how will this help us determine the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors? Well, let's just remember, recall the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix. We use it being singular in more way than one. So we realize that it has two eigenvalues that equal zero. And the first eigenvector that corresponded to the eigenvalue zero was two, negative one, zero. Two, negative one, zero. So what will now be an eigenvector is two, negative one, zero, followed by two zeros. Because if you multiply this matrix by this vector, you would get zero, 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 right? And that, of course, is also an eigenvector of this whole matrix corresponding to the eigenvalue zero, and there will be another one like it. So actually, let's for a moment now concentrate on this one, because a non-zero eigenvalue is a little bit more insightful from the point of view of this matrix. So here, the two rows each add up to three. So there is an, a vector, there is an eigenvalue that equals three, and and the corresponding eigenvector is 1, 1. So think about what would happen if you multiply the entire matrix by 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. The answer will be 0, 0, 0, because nothing here matters at all because of those zeros. 3, 3. And of course, 0, 0, 0, 3, 3 is a straight multiple of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 and the corresponding eigenvalue is three. So there's an eigenvalue that equals the eigenvalue of this matrix, 
and the corresponding eigenvector is the eigenvector of this matrix pre-filled by three zeros. And another eigenvalue for this matrix was minus one. All right, is that correct? Just from the trace of this matrix, the trace is two, one is three, and the other one is minus one. And of course it is one minus one. That's the corresponding eigenvector, one minus one. So pre-fill it with three zeros. And now you have a bona fide vector, eigenvector of the larger five by five matrix. So I can see that from this part of the matrix, how the whole thing works. Uh, it was a little bit harder to see with the zeros, but now we understand how it works. So this will be 10, zero, negative one. And then finally, this will be, do you remember that eigenvector that corresponded to the crazy eigenvalue of 35? It was one, two, three. And then of course, zero, zero. And this was 10, zero, negative one, zero, zero. And there you go, we have determined all five eigenvectors and all five corresponding eigenvalues of this block matrix. And just one last note that this block structure that completely decouples may not necessarily look like this. It can look a little bit more complicated like this, where the dimensions are not separated three and two, are intermixed together. So that's just another type of block diagonal matrix that you can learn to recognize. And that's it for block diagonal matrices for now.